Welcome to Rumsey Connections. Welcome to Rumsey Connections. My name is Meredith Gaskins. I'm joined today by the Medical Director of the Wound Care Center at Richmond University Medical Center for the last 27 years, and the Division Chief of the Plastic and Reconstructive Surgery at Rumsey, Dr. Michael Lacqua. So welcome. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Yes, very excited to have you here. Uh, through Rumsey Connections, you'll meet the doctors, nurses, and medical professionals that make our hospital thrive. We'll also provide useful information about your own health, explore the latest medical news, and hopefully get you answers to some of your own health-related questions. So today's topic is wound care. Rumsey's wound care program is part of the Center for Wound Healing's national network with success rates so high that many managed care companies have designated its location to be centers of excellence for the comprehensive management and care of chronic wounds. So on this episode, Dr. Michael Lacqua will discuss wound care and the use of hyperbaric oxygen therapy for treatment. We are the only hospital on the island, if I'm correct, that has the hyperbaric chambers, right? That's correct, yes. Perfect. So we're going to dive into that a little bit. And I'm going to give you some background on Dr. Lacqua. Dr. Lacqua has completed his general surgery training at Nassau County Medical Center in New York. He then went on to complete his residency in plastic surgery at the University of Missouri, Kansas City, followed by a fellowship in hand surgery at the University of Kansas. He completed training in hyperbaric medicine at Palmetto Richland Memorial Hospital in Columbia, South Carolina. He completed a Master of Business Administration at the Lender School of Business, Quinnipiac University, and he is board certified by the American Board of Wound Management. Dr. Lacqua has authored and co-authored multiple peer-reviewed publications. He is a member of the peer review panel for the Advances in Skin and Wound Care, Journal for Prevention and Healing, and he has presented his research at national and international meetings covering a variety of topics in the field of plastic and hand surgery. In addition to his practice, he is the founder and president of Healing Hands Abroad, a successful global outreach development and grant fundraising initiative. The organization conducts missions of volunteer healthcare professionals providing specialized surgical care to understand underserved overseas communities. So I'm very excited to jump into this hyperbaric oxygen therapy. It could be something that not many people know about. So tell me all about how many chambers we have at RUMC and what uh, type of wounds that you use to treat most frequently the chambers for. The hyperbaric unit that we have at Richmond University Medical Center, which is really across the hall mm -hmm. from the wound care center, so we work together on many patients, has three what are called monoplace chambers, which are three separate chambers that an individual would go um, into to be treated. The treatments are actually called dives. Okay. And um, they last 90 minutes. Mm -hmm. And they're very comfortable. You're essentially lying on a what feels like a lounge chair. Nice. The treatment takes 90 minutes. And most of the time, patients are either napping, listening to music, or watching TV. Mm -hmm. The patients that we do treat, most of our patients that are treated with hyperbaric therapy are diabetic patients with diabetic okay. wounds usually involving their feet. Mm -hmm. But we have also treated patients with um, injury from radionecrosis, having undergone um, radiation therapy for different conditions, and certain patients who have results from plastic surgical procedures like skin flap surgery or skin graft surgery that have not gone well, we're able to treat those additionally. Wow, okay. And the duration for the treatment, no matter the, the issue where the wound is always like about 90 minutes? It's about 90 minutes. Okay. The pressure that you feel mm -hmm. is similar to for those who are, have ever gone scuba diving. Yeah. It feels like you're at about 30 feet of pressure, okay. or 30 feet of depth. Wow. And that's what it feels like. But at the beginning of the treatment, it feels like the typical feeling most people have experienced when they're on an airplane mm -hmm. and the pressure... Yes. You know, the cabin is being pressurized. Your ears may pop a bit, mm -hmm. but you adjust to that. Yeah. And then it just feels like you feel nothing. normal. You yeah. just feel normal. Okay. The, the key thing at that time, most people don't realize that when, as we sit here today, breathing air, mm -hmm. it's only about 20% oxygen. Okay. Whereas in a hyperbaric chamber, you will be breathing 100% oxygen. Wow. So the blood levels of oxygen in your body can go up 
10, 15, 18% higher mm -hmm. than they would be ordinarily and is the magic of that additional blood that helps us treat our patients' wounds. Okay, so yes, I'm assuming leads to faster recovery times by using this method to get more oxygen to yes, the Yes, unfortunately, most of the wounds that patients have are sort of driven by either being there by either the lack of oxygen or infection. Mm -hmm. And so we can manage infection quite well with our infectious disease colleagues taking mm. antibiotics, uh, managing the wounds with various topical um, dressings. But the lack of oxygen is something that is sometimes very, very hard to restore. Mm -hmm. Patients will go see the vascular surgeons, maybe have a vascular procedure done, maybe a stent to increase the blood flow to okay. that part of the body. But sometimes it's just not possible or practical for them to do that. And so hyperbaric oxygen therapy becomes a modality that we can offer patients to overcome that deficiency of oxygen. That makes sense. And it's funny because my last guest um, was Dr. Piccarelli, our podiatrist, and we did an episode on bunions and an episode on diabetic limb salvage. Yes. And I can imagine that this would be useful for these limb salvage patients who have the, you know, the poor circulation and everything. Yes, about um, 80, I would say 80, 85% of our patients um, that we treat have diabetes as the etiology mm -hmm. behind their, their yeah. wound. And fortunately, similar to what is seen nationally, hyperbaric therapy can offer about a 70% cure rate, heal rate. Yeah. And that is what we experience as well in our center. So we're very proud of that. That's amazing. And to be the only one on Staten Island to offer that is, you know, a really nice point to offer to the community. And um, oh, yes, we, we, we are the also the only full fledged wound care center dealing with all patients with wounds of all types. Mm -hmm. And in conjunction with that, one of the very key modalities, besides a lot of the advanced tissue technologies that we use, mm -hmm. um, we do have available to us the three chambers that are yeah. you know, open every day. Let me also ask, um, how does it all work with that? Patients will come Monday through Friday. Okay. There are no dives being yeah. done on Saturday or Sunday. So it is a five-day-a-week commitment yeah. for about an hour and a half when you come. Okay. But many people, to to have their wound eradicated and to get back to doing all normal things and walking and mm -hmm. experiencing a better quality of life and visiting the grandchildren in California, they're, they're very happy to come do that if we can get them healed. Because most times, patients um, have had these wounds for a long time before yeah. seeking treatment. Okay. And then when they do, they a lot of them say, I can't believe I didn't do this sooner. Oh. So we definitely encourage anybody with a wound that lasts for more than... More than on a month, if you have a wound that's been around for more than a month, you really should have a specialist take a look at it mm -hmm. and see if there's things we can do that might get um, them heal faster. And so you say they come five days a week for the 90-minute sessions. How many weeks do they typically need before these injuries are really showing significant healing? It, it, it's hard to answer that question. Yeah, I'm sure but it's patient what, to patient. What <laughs> the guidelines are is that 10 treatments are given. So it would be two weeks oh, okay. of treatments. And then after... 10 treatments, mm -hmm. um, we assess the wound and qualitatively and quantitatively, meaning it has to look better yes. and it has to be smaller and that justifies continuing, continuing. the treatment. And that's a, a regulation with Medicare. It's a regulation with um, the insurance companies that allow us to do these treatments. And, and many people mm -hmm. don't realize yes. that, that Medicare and managed care companies, healthcare companies do allow these you treatments to be done. That's that's very important 100%. for people to know because I think a lot of people just automatically assume that this is something specialized, their insurance won't cover it, and yeah, to get... It, it's too expensive, I can't mm -hmm. afford it, I can't come, it's too much, but that is not the case at all. But that, to answer your question, 10 treatments is what's given, mm -hmm. and then if, if it's working, then they allow us to continue another 10, then you're reassessed, then another 10. It's 10 treatments at a time, so two-week commitment okay. to start. Yeah. And then you see if it helps you, and again, 70% of the time it will. Wow. So there's no reason not to try. Yeah. And can we go back to the origins of these chambers? So they are started with, they started this for scuba divers? Yes. The modality came to light in about 1940 mm -hmm. when the Navy was doing all this, this underwater work and, and patients were experiencing what we call decompression illness but it's more commonly called the BENDS, mm. B-E-N-D-Z. Yeah. And, and what they found was that by placing them in these chambers, they were able to overcome the illness that the um, divers were experiencing. And then they began to realize with a whole lot of really smart people yeah. that if while you're under pressure, while you're experiencing this amount of pressure, if you breathe oxygen, you will force more of the oxygen into your blood supply. Okay. And, and the levels rise. And it was in 1960s that it began to be used for 
patients with, with wounds. And then it has really come a long ways since then, you know, defining how it could be used, the duration of treatment, the, the pressures that are used. For instance, if you have a soft tissue wound, you will only have a, a pressure feel of about what they call two atmospheres. Okay. Um, if you have a bone infection or a bone wound that needs to be healed, you probably will be given a, a procedure or treatment about two and a half times that. So it, it will vary somewhat depending upon the type of wound that you have, but mm -hmm. most people uh, will undergo treatment for 90 minutes, five times a week at what is considered two atmospheres of pressure, which feels like you are at about 30, 30 feet, feet of, of depth when you're wow. scuba diving. Okay, very that's, interesting. That's how that works. What are uh, the treatment options for these non-healing wounds? Yeah, I think it's important to realize as good as hyperbaric oxygen therapy is, yeah. and it's a, it's one of the treatments that we can offer. The mainstay of treatment, however, mm -hmm. is really assessing the patient, assessing the wound. Uh, what about the patient? Can we improve to help get this wound healed? Mm -hmm. What modalities, in addition to hyperbaric, we can use uh, to get these healed wounds? And a lot of that has to do with, with simply managing the wound, mm -hmm. helping people understand why they have the wound, helping people understand how if they stop smoking, mm -hmm. maybe their wounds will heal faster, or if they better manage their diabetes, mm -hmm. or if we can switch some of the medications that they're on to something else that might be preventing the wound from healing, mm -hmm that would be a great benefit to them. Additional to that, most patients who have wounds are seen by us weekly. Okay. So rather than just instituting one treatment and sending a patient away and having to come back mm -hmm. a week later, yeah. we're able to see them, a month later, I should say, um, we see them month, uh, weekly. Mm -hmm. And seeing them weekly, we can modify the way in which wounds are treated because initially, Perhaps the wounds need to be cleaned up a bit, mm -hmm. need to have the infection controlled. Okay. And then once that happens, after a week or two, mm -hmm. then we can switch them over to a lot of the advanced tissue technology, all of which Richmond University has to apply to the wound to get them to heal much more quickly. And probably the other thing that's key mm -hmm. is we hook them up with the social services to allow mm -hmm. visiting nurses to come to their home to do the dressing changes care, twice yeah. a week or three times a week, mm -hmm. depending on what they need. And many people don't realize Medicare and other managed care plans will pay for that service. Wow. Yeah. They shouldn't be struggling with trying to get their neighbor to change the bandage for mm -hmm. them. We can help them. We're very, very well experienced with all the, the, the companies that do this, the Visiting Nurse Association, the Visiting Nurse Services, all of these services here on Staten Island, as well as the providers of all of the material that they will need like the medical supply services, that they can have all of the bandages shipped directly to them to their home. They don't have to order it on Amazon. They don't have to go to a, uh, you know, a pharmacy. They don't have to go to a wound care supply store. Mm -hmm. They can have everything shipped to them. It'll be left at their front door. It makes their life a lot easier. And they think all of this contributes to their getting their wounds he healed yeah, faster. Of course. That's wonderful service to offer. Yeah, we, we provide all of that. We've been in existence for now 27 years and we're well versed with all of the intricacies of helping people in the little nuances that, mm -hmm. that they may need to help them get their wounds heal faster. Very nice. How is it determined which conditions hyperbaric oxygen therapy can treat? A lot of studies have been done because mm -hmm. uh, you certainly don't want to use a modality like hyperbaric that does require somewhat of a, of a buy-in by the patient, a commitment yeah. to coming five days yeah. a week. Unless it is going to work. So mm -hmm. very smart people did a lot of work back in the 70s and 80s and 90s looking at what wounds were best treated. Yeah. And there is actually a list of 16 conditions that can be treated okay. that are approved by the FDA, that are approved by Medicare, and that mm -hmm. are approved by healthcare providers. Okay. And the big ones, of course, are, are diabetes, diabetes related, and those yeah. patients who are suffering from what we call arterial insufficiency, which means the blood isn't simply getting there mm -hmm. uh, the way it should. And so by putting more oxygen in the blood that gets there, okay. obviously more oxygen will be in the wound. And, and oxygen is really important. You, you can't heal wound, you can't be alive without oxygen. Yeah. And, and so in very simple terms, if, if you don't have the oxygen that drives so much of the mechanism of healing, you, you're simply not going to heal. That's why oxygen is so important. Yeah. Okay. Very cool. Speaking about, you know, conditions like diabetes, which would also be treated by a doctor, um, would you say that the hyperbaric therapy is a primary or a secondary treatment option for them? I mean, for diabetic patients who have a wound for more than um, a month mm -hmm. and who have been evaluated by a vascular surgeon 
and the vascular surgeon says, there's nothing we can do surgically, there's nothing we can do interventionally, okay. this is as good as you're going to get. And there are some people who fall into the category of, yes, you could have an operation to have a procedure done, but you're just sort of not healthy enough. Yeah. And, and that happens quite a bit, unfortunately. So it is those people, that subset of people that can really be helped. And then many times it's it's their last course that they could take to help them heal their wounds. Mm-hmm. And so do you think you see a lot of smokers as patients coming in for the hyperbaric stuff? Unfortunately, I do not smoke, but I understand it. Yeah. It is, and nicotine is quite addicting yeah. and it's, it can be um, something very difficult to quit. Mm-hmm. But, you know, having a wound and having the, the negative effects that has on your life as far as your quality and what you're able to do, get out and about, visit grandchildren and all, if you never, ever needed a reason to, to quit smoking, this is one of them. But we, we have that. We have smoking cessation yes. groups that are available at yeah. Richmond University, and we can link the patient up to that. Mm-hmm. Um, in addition to smoking, if, if a patient's diet isn't what it should be, we have nutritionists that could that come with. visit with them. Yeah. Um, we have endocrinologists that can help them manage mm-hmm. their, their glucose better. Um, all of these things that, that sometimes are, are put to the side actually play an important role. And you'd be surprised how if you begin to fix some of those things or just modify some of those things a bit, yeah. the wound suddenly heals mm-hmm. and the patients can't believe it. It's amazing. But for us, working in the Wuka Center, it's 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 very common, very logical that we see uh, a lot of this. And so results. we would encourage anybody mm-hmm. with a wound, again, that just simply hasn't healed in about a month, you know, come on by. Sometimes we can just single visit. We can give you yeah. some tips on what to do. Other times, if it's really, really unmanageable for you, we can get you into a setting where you can have the people come to your home to help you and have all the supplies sent to you. All of these things sometimes um, are thought about as not being possible, yeah. but but they are. We, we we know how to do it, and we'll help you do it. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure that must be so rewarding for you as a doctor to, it, to see these patients thrive and you know recover is. from these wounds. I it always is. love to ask this question. Do you have a most memorable patient who this kind of therapy really helped and yes. changed and their it life? Was, it was... He was a gentleman in about his 70s. He uh-huh. had a big wound of his of his leg. Okay. He lived here. He had been treating it at home with the help of his primary care doctor for about a year. Oh, wow. It was, it was a long time. It was yeah. a very long time for him, and he was never able to get it healed. And because of it, he had not visited his grandchildren in California. Uh, okay. Because it had just gotten so bad for him. It was very odiferous, didn't smell very good. And so in about seven weeks of using a, a specialized silver product that we have access to, we got his wound healed and he could not believe it. And one of the first things he did was to fly out to Aww. see his uh, grandchildren in, in California. So as a plastic surgeon, people always say to me, who are your happiest patients? Or is yeah. it the Botox patient? <laughs> is it the facelift patient? Who is it? It's like, no, it's definitely the wound care the patients. Care. They're the most appreciative. And definitely the happiest when, when you can restore someone's ability to live their life, mm-hmm. that, that is really a special mm-hmm. thing. And we're grateful for the support that we get from Richmond University, mm-hmm. knowing all that we have available um, in our center. And we're appreciative of all the patients that come to allow us to, to help them. Oh, absolutely. I don't think that there's anything that tops <laughs> you know somebody's quality of life. You really don't get you know, yeah. much better of a reward than that. Would you say that there's any risks or side effects that you see on a day-to-day basis with the hyperbaric, hyperbaric therapy? Hyperbaric unit is, is, it has come a long way when it, when it first started, when there were issues with, with lots of bad things. But now, I think what we call it is barrow trauma. Okay. But to the layperson, it would be that that feeling that they have in their ears, similar to when you're on an airplane, yeah, just and getting that to sort of clear, whether you kind of jiggle you your jaw or you swallow hard, <laughs> you kind of get the ears to pop. Yeah. If that can happen for whatever mm-hmm. reason, um, you know, the treatment can't go on. That usually happens the first time. Okay. And then what we do is, is the patient stops the treatment. We send them to the um, ENT doctors, mm-hmm. and they figure out why they're not able to clear. Sometimes they just have some inflammation of the ear. Mm-hmm. They treat the inflammation, and then the patient is able, able to, to have have their treatment. Um, sometimes patients get, although the chambers are clear, yeah. you feel like you're in a very large, clear bubble. Mm-hmm. Sometimes patients experience claustrophobia. Yeah. And and that is probably, I don't know that that's a complication, but mm-hmm. it is something that prevents patients from having a treatment. But that 
ordinarily after a time or two, patients seem to develop and, and develop yeah. a, a, a custom nice to it. That it's clear and, too. Yeah, and they watch TV, listen to huh. music, nice and, and, and they kind of you know set their mind, and then they're able to continue on. And they can sleep if they wanted to during oh, yeah. it. Yeah, oh, most people perfect. sleep. Most okay. people take a little nap. They come for their nice. early appointment because we start early. We start at six a.m. Wow. So many patients roll out of bed. They come. They go back to the chamber. Go back to sleep for ninety minutes. And then they wake up and they start their day. Okay. So yeah, it's it's a pretty a pretty simple and um, effective treatment, yeah. and a and a very safe treatment. We have not had any uh, big issues for the. I think we're in our fifteenth year of providing hyperbaric therapy, and we have not had any issues. Thank wow, God. Wow, that's wonderful. Yeah. And yeah. how many patients would you say are inpatient versus outpatient that use the? We um, treat all outpatients, yeah. and we treat starting at 6 a.m. until about 6 p.m. Okay. We can simultaneously treat three patients. So we see about about 15 to 20 patients a day. A patient who has a chronic Ill- illness, how can they get signed up for hyperbaric treatment? Do they need a referral from their specialist, or can they come directly to you? They, they can come directly. Sometimes if they're managed care, they may need a referral, but mm-hmm. that would be based upon the plan that they have. Yeah. But they come, they see me, they see... Um, Dr. Jervis, who um, runs the center there as far as the day-to-day management, and we see if they're a candidate. And then what we do is we take photographs of their wound. We write a letter of medical necessity based upon what they have told us about the medical history. Mm -hmm. We send it off to the insurance company. We send it off to Medicare. We get approval. And this way the patients know that their first, like I mentioned, their first 10 treatments Mm -hmm. will be paid for by their insurance. And then we have them come in and get underway. We give them orientation as to what to expect. Um, There are certain requirements about, you know, what they have to do from what they wear and what they can't wear as Mm -hmm. far as jewelry and certain types of clothing. We give them all the orientation. And then the staff there, which is great, will just walk them through it. It's pretty simple. Very nice. And I would think that, yeah, like you said, the insurance covers it. So that's very helpful and very minimal side effects. You know, this makes this a very appealing form of treatment. Correct. How how frequently do you use pictures to document the healing process for these patients? We, uh, pictures taken every time a patient comes. Every day. Okay, I was yes. going to say, is it weekly or daily? Because yeah. the insurance companies and Medicare themselves will actually want to see mm-hmm. um, that the wound is actually improving. So okay. we... we completely um, document that. It also helps us. Yeah. Sometimes you can't remember what the wound looked like last week and versus mm-hmm. this week. So we'll just go back and take a look. Yeah. And and we have all of that available in the center. We have a software that manages and tracks all mm-hmm. of that. And so we, we can... We, we can give you the yeah. statistics because we're able to track all of that stuff. Are there any topical treatments that are used in conjunction with this? Yes, they, they go from simple things like bacitracin or neosporin uh-huh. all the way up to advanced um, biological products like Keras' Fishkin product or the Innova Matrix um, porcine product. We, we have the full gamut, and not every wound is a candidate for everyone. Mm-hmm. That's the decision that, that I make, that the other uh, wound care doctors make, because you don't need necessarily to use all of that. Mm-hmm. We taper it based upon what need mm. your patient has, and, and that's why if it needs oxygen, they're mm-hmm. going to get hyperbaric oxygen therapy. If they need just simply control of infection, yeah. we have products that do that. If they need something being topically applied on a weekly basis that will inspire their own innate ability to heal, mm-hmm. you know, to create epithelial cells yeah. to heal the wound, we have those products available. There's a whole host of products that are beyond, you know, today that mm-hmm. we can talk about. But rest assured, if, if a patient comes, yeah. exactly what it is that they need to get their wound to the next step of healing, they will receive. Mm-hmm. And it's very interesting to me that you can use this for, for an infection in the bone. How does that, do you get an infection usually from a break or is that something that could occur in a... Most Sorry. patients who have that, unfortunately, have undergone radiation therapy okay, to treat so their oral gotcha. cancer, gotcha. and the bone gets affected by the radiation therapy. Okay. And what radiation therapy does, unfortunately, simply, is cause a narrowing and a thickening of the blood vessel, so not mm. enough blood or not the same amount of blood can get through to the bone, and the bone, unfortunately, uh, develops something called osteoradial necrosis, mm. which, which is a problem. And you see it, unfortunately, a lot in our veterans who, who have been treated with this for different head and neck cancers. And so Dr. Marks, the Marks protocol was established, and that involves uh, 30 days of treatment. Mm-hmm. And many patients come for that. And what we have found is that that ill effect of the radiotherapy can be reversed by receiving the hyperbaric oxygen treatment. Interesting. So do you get a large amount yeah. of oncology patients? Yes, with the... 
we have the military base here, the some of the bases here in Brooklyn, mm-hmm. some of the bases here on Staten Island. We have those patients. Additionally, bone that has been affected by infection, mm-hmm. osteomyelitis, um, those patients um, do very well when they are receiving um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy in conjunction with the antibiotics that they're receiving. So that's another subset of bone infection mm. that we are able to take care of and help. Can a patient who's getting chemotherapy get the oxygen therapy at the same time? No, it would be it would be um, antibacterial therapy for the infection. Okay. We wait until the cancer is treated, then the effect unfortunately occurs, and then we go ahead and treat it. Got it. Makes sense. Okay. Yeah. And what um, type of accreditation process did RUMC need to go through to be able to use the hyperbaric oxygen therapy? The, the Center for Wound Healing, which is the umbrella that oversees us, the company mm-hmm. oversees us, they have gone through, they're national, and they have gone through in every state credentialing, as they have here in New York and in, particularly in Staten Island, have gone through credentialing to make sure that the equipment is when it needs to be, the oversight of the of the equipment is where it is. The oversight of the people managing mm-hmm. the patients yeah. having treatments have all received training and are all, um, you know, certified to that degree. And that's what we have at Richmond University. Wonderful. This type of treatment is it effective in killing bacteria, fungi, and viruses? Certain type depends. That's a tough question to answer. Yeah. But but certainly there are certain bacteria that prefer to live in an environment and very bad bacteria in what's called an anaerobic environment where there isn't any oxygen. Mm. So once you give them too much oxygen, they die. Okay. And that's a wonderful thing because many of our patients have infections with anaerobic bacteria that we can directly treat. And they're also, um, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is very synergistic, works mm. very well together with a lot of the antibiotics. So you can sort of, with two modalities, treat the same problem and 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 the this this the sum of the effect is greater than the separation of the two parts. So, um, it it really in conjunction with the infectious disease doctors at our hospital, we're able to work with many patients with very bad infections to get them healed. Hmm, very interesting. And with all the new research of like the micro butt biome, biome, excuse me, and things like that, do you think that this kind of therapy can be useful for Yeah, that? I think that's something that will be looked at. And yeah. I think there's always, hyperbaric oxygen therapy is always a big modality being studied. And we stay on top of all of that. And, and the minute something becomes available that we can, a modality that will help a, a condition that can be FDA approved and mm-hmm. then Medicare approved, absolutely. We will make sure we stay on, and we do continue to stay on top yeah. of all of that. Oh, that's fantastic to be able to offer that. And so does this type of therapy stimulate the body to form new blood vessels? Yes. What drives the creation of what's called neovascularization, very okay. fancy word, is is having a gradient of, of, of a lot amount of blood and oxygen on one side and an area where there isn't any blood. And that area where there isn't any blood is typically a wound. And so when you have normal tissue on the outskirts of that wound, which is very devoid of oxygen, that that gradient is driven to create new blood vessels to creep into the wound. And it's those blood vessels that bring with it all the nutrients and oxygen and all that's needed to create new epithelial cells in order to close the wound. So it's really a very scientific thing, a very cool modality that can be very helpful for patients who have had wounds for a long time and they just can't get them healed. Absolutely. This truly sounds, you know, like wonderful service that we're able to offer the yes. island and the community. And I would like to thank you for all that you do to keep our community safe and well. Thank you. And I look forward to, yeah, to seeing further advancements in the future and what this leads to and all that it could treat. That about does it for this episode of Rumsey Connections. But for more information about wound care and hyperbaric oxygen therapy services at Rumsey, you can call 718-818- 1117 or visit rumsysi.org. Thank you for joining us. Thank you, Meredith. It was great to be here. Perfect. Wonderful. I'm Meredith Gaston.